Hi there, I'm Emily, also known as the Drone Angel. And today, we're gonna to be analyzing DJI itself, not just one of their drone releases. Which is kinda unfortunate, since I do love to geek out on new drones. But before we get started, please take a moment and smash that subscribe button to stay up to date on drone news and tips. DJI is a company that everyone in the drone industry is hopefully familiar with. But how much do we really know about the company that makes most of our tech? First of all, the name DJI stands for Dejane Innovations, which more or less implies innovation without limits. It's a fitting name considering their track record as the company always at the forefront of new drone technology. If I could produce content as quickly as DJI has made technological advancements, well, let's just say I would have a golden play button behind me right now. Have you ever had a dreams that that you um you had you 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 could you do? DJI sprouted from the dorm room of model airplane enthusiast and Hong Kong University of Science and Technology student Frank Wayne. It could have stopped there, but it didn't, which is really an ongoing theme with DJI. After diving headfirst into drone design, Wayne opened up shop in Shenzhen City and began building prototypes. If you're not familiar, Shenzhen is the fourth largest city in China and is well known for being a tech hotspot. It's also a popular place for startups and massive technology companies alike. Think everything from Tencent to Makeblock. That's pretty solid foreshadowing, if you ask me. Alrighty then. It took seven years for DJI to go from those first prototypes in a dorm room in 2006 to a fully functional purchasable drone in 2013. But even so, the Phantom 1 was ahead of the pack when it came to consumer drone technology. That might be a hard pill to swallow, seeing as DJI's debut release didn't even have a camera and it could only fly for under 10 minutes at a time. Part of the Phantom 1's appeal was that DJI was operating in a very new field. There weren't all that many options to begin with, so every new drone made a splash. The other half of the equation is that DJI was already being innovative in ways that made it hard for the competitors to catch up. The Phantom 1 included an internal GPS system, a feature that single-handedly made the Phantom 1 that much easier for pilots to fly because it gifted the drone with stability and consistent hovering. Buying a drone with no camera for videography does seem ridiculous now. And to be honest, it was a very hard sell for people back then. It still wasn't the type of money most people were comfortable spending on a drone that wasn't even usable for photography on its own. Of course, drone enthusiasts aren't most people. Nerd alert! Encouraged by the Phantom 1, it didn't take long for DJI drones to evolve past that point. The Phantom 2 was released in the very same year, and shortly after that, DJI released the Phantom 2 Vision. This pair of drones blew the Phantom 1 out of the water. Not only was there now a GoPro attached and a 20 minute flight time, but DJI included its newly developed three axis gimbal system. Having a camera on a drone was a game changer, since it was no longer just a hobbyist drone, but a tool that could capture content commercially. I remember when my friend bought his and his excitement when he was able to use that drone on site as a developer. I want you to think about that for a moment. In only a year, DJI improved upon every pain point that the Phantom 1 had. The filming experience was more stable, the flight time was doubled, and DJI had a solid foundation to build its own four-rotor flying castle on. After looking at just the first two Phantoms, it's easy to see why Dejane ended up ahead of every other drone on the market. I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. But it wasn't until the Phantom 3 series in 2015 that DJI was truly launched into the mainstream. The Phantom 3 had three variations for purchase. No, I don't think that was intentional. The standard was the cheapest and it also had the shortest range at one kilometer. Kilometer, kilo, kilo kilo, kilometer, kilometer. Losing my mind. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. And the shortest flight time at 20 minutes. Honestly, the lower flight time didn't matter too much since the Phantom 3 Advance and the Phantom 3 Professional only increased that battery life by three minutes. What's more relevant is that the sensor range and camera quality got a lot better with each level, ending with the Phantom 3 Professional's 
4K 12 megapixel camera with a two kilometers range. That was the best a DJI drone had ever seen. Although the price made it out of reach for most casual pilots, the Phantom 3 sparked interest from professionals and prosumers that has yet to die out. The icing on the cake for the Phantom 3 series is that DJI improved its GPS system for even smoother flights. GLONASS, which is the Russian GPS system, was added to the P3s, allowing all the drones to connect to Russian satellites. As if the Phantom 3 wasn't already one of the most reliable drones on the market. 60% of the time, it works every time. By 2016, competitors like PowerVision, Parrot, and Skydio had already entered the drone market with varying degrees of success. DJI, though, was releasing yet another high-quality drone with a Phantom 4. This drone was the first consumer drone with a front and bottom facing obstacle avoidance system and had some of the best computer vision out of any drone on the market. It also had an improved gimbal that let the Phantom 4's camera stay more stable in the air than previous iterations. In November 2016, the Phantom 4 Pro came out. While the design looked similar to the Phantom 4, the Pro specs were better with extra sensors, better battery life, and better video and photo quality to name a few. The better obstacle avoidance was a game changer for me since I oftentimes fly in tight spaces. I remember getting it in December of that year and taking it to Oahu with me. The obstacle avoidance was very useful when I was flying near rocky terrain while on a hike. It's not surprising that DJI ate up as much market share as it did, considering the progress made just between the Phantom 1 and the Phantom 4 Pro. That's about three years of near constant improvement in a highly technical fledgling industry. The Phantom 4 Pro wasn't the end of DJI smacking rival drones out of the air. The infamous, or maybe just completely obscure, GoPro Karma was set to release in late 2015. This drone offered portability that none of DJI's Phantom series even came close to, with the clout of a big portable camera brand. Unfortunately for them, DJI was a master of well-timed releases. Shortly after GoPro made their announcement, DJI followed up with the Mavic Pro the first DJI drone to focus on portability while still managing to have more features and capability than the Karma did. It doesn't help that the GoPro Karma started literally dropping from the air, almost like there was an invisible hand just smacking them down. All right, what's going on here? Oh, sir, I'm oh. In 2018, GoPro announced that they were discontinuing the Karma and went on to lay off hundreds of staff to reduce the costs. After the smashing success of the Mavic Pro, DJI decided small was clearly the way to go and released the Spark, a drone so small and so brightly colored that it looks more like a toy than a state-of-the-art drone. It was eventually replaced in 2019 with the Mavic Mini, a drone that had DJI's signature three-axis gimbal and significantly better flight time. But before the Mavic Mini, DJI released a different tiny terror. This was another example of DJI blatantly trying to push a competitor out of the market before it could really enter the market to begin with. In this case, the competitor was Altel, with the Evo 1 being released in 2018, only to have DJI follow up with the Mavic Air. Although not as small as the Spark, the Mavic Air was an incredible all-rounder drone that included a 4K 12 megapixels camera, eight gigabytes of internal storage, and the holy three-axis gimbal. On top of that, the Mavic Air also included the intelligent flight system that we're all quite familiar with by now, allowing pilots to use flight modes like smart capture, tap fly, and active track. The Mavic 2 Pro was also released in late 2018 and had a couple of features that had never been seen before for a consumer drone. Namely, the Mavic 2 Pro had a one inch sensor and adjustable aperture, both of which were invaluable features for photographers. I remember its release like it was yesterday. Everyone freaked out when they heard it was equipped with a Hasselblad camera. This super portable prosumer drone was a hit and it flew off the shelves. I got mine right away and I took it on a work trip to Poland. I found its portability to be a game changer, especially since I was traveling with a ton of gear. Its size also made it super easy to fly through castles and get shots in tight spaces. 
The omnidirectional sensors boosted my confidence when following subjects with ActiveTrack. And the better battery life was the cherry on top. DJI just never let up on the gas and has been releasing continuations to both the Mavic Pro and the Mavic Air series ever since. Each new release includes tons of new features and continued improvement to battery life, range, and other staples. Just look at the Mavic Air 2S, the Mavic 3, and the Mavic 3 Cine for examples of DJI's constant growth. Aside from those two lineups that everyone is most familiar with, DJI actually released several other specialty drones. These include the S series and the Inspire series, which are targeted toward big budget cinematographers and the Agrass MG1, which is targeted toward the agricultural industry. They aren't part of DJI's main two lineups, but they still help to establish DJI's superiority and other sectors of the droning industry. Definitely give them a search if you wanna learn more. If I had to summarize DJI's rise to excellence, I'd say it was a mixture of listening to their consumers, incredible timing, and just having better technology. It doesn't get much simpler than that. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, the biggest compliment to me is if you could share it with someone else that would also enjoy it. Of course, hit subscribe to stay up to date on drone news and tips. If you're interested, I also do online educational consulting and hands-on workshops where I teach you how to fly over whales and dolphins. More information is on my website and in the links below. I'll see you in the next video.